This is the stealth build we've been planning. A pure blackout workstation powered by the 9950X 3D. But first we need to choose the right X870 motherboard for content creation and I'm gonna need your guys help. I desperately need a new system for the YouTube channel and these are the four motherboards that I have to pick out of. So what I would love for you guys is tell me exactly which motherboard you would pick out of these four. I'll go through a bit of what I'm looking for and a few of the features and if the majority of you choose one board then I will switch out for that board. This board is the Phantom Gaming X870 Nova Wi-Fi. This board is definitely aimed at high-end AM5 builds but the first thing that stands out is the VRM. It's an 18 plus 2 plus 1 setup using smart power stages. That just means that it can feed a lot of clean power to the CPU and it's built to handle overclocking without freaking out. But storage is kind of the headline here. Five NVMe slots and two of them are Gen 5. So if you're someone who collects SSDs like Pokemon cards or you edit a ton of footage, you shouldn't run out of room anytime soon. We have massive heat sinks for thermal protection and the bottom of the NVMe drive actually has its own heat sink as well. And we also have PD 3.0 charging up to 36 watts. So if you want to charge your phone, that'll supply really fast charging. We do use our phone a lot in our work. So if we're just sitting at the computer, it can be charging, definitely a plus for us. The Wi-Fi 7 on this motherboard actually has something called Multi-Link. It's basically future-proof wireless that's built for low latency gaming and streaming. You could use each frequency band of Wi-Fi simultaneously. Ease of building is always a nice touch. We have the easy release for the GPU, which is amazing because I'm sick of trying to get my finger down there behind the GPU backplate to try and release the GPU. And we've also got the Toolless M.2 heatsink up the top there. I mean, graphics cards are bricks now, so it's good to see that the main top slot is reinforced steel. And for memory support, it's been tested all the way up to 8400 megahertz plus. So we should be able to use some faster RAM. One thing I almost forgot is we have these ultra power USB ports, which basically clean the signal for better audio experience. And we've got two lightning gaming ports, which actually reduce the latency for keyboard and mice. So in my opinion, this motherboard is more geared towards someone who wants top tier gaming, maybe content creation, who wants fast storage. We've got five gig networking. It's not the cheapest option, but it's got so many many features that'll benefit the user if this board is for you. What do you guys think? That's a tough contender. Our second motherboard is the X870 Live Mixer Wi-Fi. The Live Mixer is definitely targeted towards those who want something a little more creativity focused. Out of the four motherboards, this is the weakest VRM setup. It is a 16 plus 2 plus 1 phase design, which is plenty for any Ryzen 7000 or 9000 chip, even if you're pushing clocks a little bit. Storage is still solid, four NVMe slots, two of them being Gen 5. And like the higher end motherboards, the NVMEs do get thermal attention. So we've obviously got the top heatsink, but they all come with the bottom heatsink as well. The top Gen 5 slot also has the quick release, which is honestly fantastic because Gen 5 heatsinks are getting so big and so annoying. The big story here though is connectivity. This thing is basically a huge USB hub disguised as a motherboard. Up to 25 USB ports combined with case headers. Just like the previous motherboard, we've got two USB 4 type C headers, 40 gigabits per second, which will be great for external external storage. Plus we do have the two lightning gaming ports on this motherboard as well, but decreased latency for your keyboard and mice. And we've also got the ultra USB power on here as well for better audio signal. Is it gonna double your KD? Probably not, but uh, every little bit helps. Expansion options are great too. We've got dual PCIe times four slots alongside the main reinforced steel GPU slot. So capture cards, storage cards, or audio gear can all live within the system at the same time. For networking and memory, we do have the Wi-Fi 7, a game with multi-link for lower latency gaming. Remember, you can use all the bands of Wi-Fi simultaneously. And we have DDR5, XMP, and Expo support all the way up to 8,000 megahertz. So you can still run fast RAM without having to be a BIOS scientist. To me, this motherboard is geared at streamers, content creators, anyone with a desk full of gear that needs to be plugged all in at once. It's a feature-rich board without going into that ultra enthusiast pricing. So it's got a good balance between performance and workflow convenience. The USB is attempting. I don't know if I use 25 though. On to the next motherboard. This has to be my favorite looking motherboard of the bunch. This is the X870 Tai Chi Creator from Azeroth. And this motherboard leans more into the professional workstation grade side of things. The power delivery is serious. It's an 18 plus two plus one. Designed more than enough for high core Ryzen chips. It's clearly built for long sustained performance rather than just 
momentary boosts. One of the biggest differences here between this board and the rest is it has dual PCIe times 16 slots. Yes, you can run two graphics cards. That instantly makes this board interesting to 3D artists, AI researchers, or anyone who needs two GPUs. Not a feature you see often on consumer boards anymore. And both of them are reinforced steel to help take that load off of the GPU. Storage keeps up with that theme. We have four NVMe slots with two of them being Gen 5. We do have the toolless heatsink and the easy release for the GPU as well. Plus, under these massive NVMe heatsinks, they also have the bottom heatsink, much like the rest of the lineup. Connectivity is where this really separates from gaming-focused motherboards. This is the only board to feature 10 and 5 gig LAN at the same time. Now, we have so many files that we share between the team, so editing straight from the NAS would be such a convenience. We do have the dual USB 4 Type-C ports at the back there for 40 gigabits per second transfer speeds. And we also have the PD 3.0 charging, much like the first motherboard where we can charge our phone with 36 watts of power really quickly. While this motherboard can still game, it focuses more on the content creation side of things. So they've removed the lightning power USB ports and instead given us four ultra USB ports. So if you have a bunch of audio gear, you plug them into those ports and it gives you a cleaner signal. We still have Wi-Fi 7 Multi-Link for low latency Wi-Fi. And we have AMD Expo or Intel XMP speeds all the way up to 8 megahertz. So those higher frequency DDR5 kits, they're basically plug and go. Look, honestly, it's the cleanest of the four. Definitely a serious contender. Serious creators and workstation users who could utilize dual GPUs, high speed networking and pro grade IO, whether that's video editing, 3D content or AI development will benefit from this motherboard. If your PC is how you make money, this is the type of motherboard that you want. Honestly, very high contender. Okay, now if you're serious about overclocking, you're serious about power, the ASRock X870E Tai Chi OCF is the motherboard for you. This is the let's see how far we can push this motherboard. It's built for enthusiasts. The type of people who run stability tests just for fun and get excited about voltage regulation. You get a huge 22 plus 2 plus one power design, which is way more than any normal system, but exactly what any enthusiast wants for pushing Ryzen chips to their limits. A key design choice here is one DIMM per channel. You only get two sticks of RAM, but it's a much cleaner signal. So we can push our speeds all the way up to 10,400 megahertz plus. There's also a full overclocking toolkit on board. Three profile buttons to instantly load different profiles, features that prevent cold booting issues, and so much more to help with overclocking. Storage is absolutely stacked on this motherboard. Six NVMe slots with two of them being Gen 5. So even if you're not breaking records, your workflow will be flying. Cooling for the NVMe's includes bottom heat sinks as well as the massive top heat sinks. And speaking of cooling, it is so much more aggressive around the VRMs compared to the other lineup. Built-in heat pipe and even a dedicated VRM cooling fan. Much like the other motherboards, we do have our dual USB 4 40 gigabit per second Type-C ports. We've got the PD 3.0 fast charging for our phone, 36 watts. But this motherboard actually has dual USB Type-C headers for your more modern cases. We also have the Wi-Fi 7 with multi-link tech again for lower latencies. And the PCIe layer was actually designed for multiple GPUs in mind. Both are reinforced steel. There's bigger spacing between them for better airflow. If you enjoy pushing performance just because you can, world record, memory speeds, competitive benchmarking, extreme tuning, this is the motherboard for that. Guys, I think the X870 Tai Chi Creator is the motherboard for us. The main thing that really sold me with this motherboard is the 10 gig LAN. Editing straight off of the NAS is something that will benefit our team so much. We don't game too much anymore. So having the four ultra USB power is going to help us. The only downside with this motherboard is the four NVMe slots as opposed to the six. However, we will make that work by editing straight from the NAS, which is going to fix all of the issues with storage anyway. However, let me know down in the comments which one you would have picked. And if you guys give me some good enough reasons, perhaps I'll swap it out. The Ryzen 9 9950X 3D is a no-brainer for us. If we do want to play a couple games, great gaming CPU, but mostly for the cores and threads, 16 cores, 32 threads, our rendering and workloads are going to be completed in no time at all.
Of course, we have to utilize Gen 5. This is the T700 Pro, read and write of 12,400 megabytes per second. And of course, we won't need the built-on heatsink because the motherboard already has some beefy ones and we actually have a few more on the way to populate all the slots. RAM, we're going with the Corsair Dominator Platinum. This is a 32 gigabyte kit, CL34 timings. I do have two more sticks to bring it up to 64 gigs, but I wanna test how stable the 7,000 megahertz is with an AMD CPU, because usually AMD, they can't handle the higher frequencies as well as Intel. But I'll tell you what, if I can get it to handle it, and then we can add the two extra sticks, I'll have 64 gigs in total, which is gonna be so good for our video editing and rendering. Our case today is pretty special to me. It is the Maestro 700L PZ. It's a limited edition case from MSI. Our badge number is 1027. Plenty of cooling inside this case while showing us the beautiful internals. I'll fit three fans down the bottom, three up the top, and three at the rear. Let's get building. I want this system to be all about performance and cooling. We've got the FL12 performance fans from Deepcool. Pure black design, no RGB. That's what I want for our workstation. For our cooler, we're going with the Panorama 360. Yes, we will be removing the ARGB fans. We just want pure performance and no RGB. The highest of end GPUs is not as important for us as the CPU. However, we do want to benefit from CUDA performance. So 16 gigs of VRAM is going to be plenty for us. I couldn't justify paying 5,000 Australian dollars for a 5090. So we actually went with a 5070 Ti. I mean, the pricing is just stupid, isn't it? <laughs> For a personal system, I always want to put in a good power supply. This is the Antec Signature 1000 watt. This one says platinum, but it's actually titanium. I had it in the wrong box. I always want to supply my components with reliable power. Ran 3D Mark still Nomad, and you can see we got a score of 6,948 points. The average for this hardware is 6,919, so we scored a little bit higher. And we're expected to get 200 plus FPS in games like Battlefield 5, 140 plus FPS in Apex Legends, 185 plus in GTA 5, and this is all at 1440p. Cinebench 2024, we got a score of 2,310 points. It was just a 10 minute throttle test, and our max CPU temperature hit 73 degrees Celsius. Speeds are looking good, guys. I ran a crystal disk mark on our C drive and we got 12,379 megabytes per second read. And remember, the advertised was 12,400. That is pretty close. Geekbench 6, single core score of 3,414. Multi-core score of 22,570. You guys can obviously do this at home and compare. But here is our single core performance and our multi-core performance. You guys can pause the video if you want to do any comparison. And Cyberpunk. 
Hunt 2077 inbuilt game benchmark, we were seeing an average of 72 FPS, and you guys can see all the settings here. It was 4K full screen ultra preset. Our GPU hit a cruisy 52 degrees, while the CPU jumped up to around 67 degrees Celsius. Well, overall, I think we got some pretty good scores. That CPU multi-core performance is fantastic, and we are able to run our RAM at 7,000 megahertz, no problem, on an AMD platform. So I am going to put in my 64 gigs of RAM running at 7,000 megahertz. What do you guys think? Should we have swapped the motherboard for something else? If you want to check out the features further, I'll put the links in the description because I am curious though. If enough of you tell me to change the motherboard to another one, I will do that. But I think the results do speak for themselves. Speaking of results, there was a case that we looked at last week that blew our minds with how well these little extra gimmicks and features that they included in there actually made the performance so much better. Go and check it out. Thanks for watching.